Got all kinds of things to deal with in Chicago. This is real hard times out here for people. Not a resident. Yeah. 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 You either live here or you don't. So if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. It's a real nail biter for those who love Chicago style political drama. The mayor's chair is open, and while court battles have threatened to overshadow campaigns, Chicagoans need to know that their concerns will be heard. Well, that's what we're about. From my special guest tonight to your live phone calls, plus, we're going to ask mayoral candidate William Doc Walls, why are you running for mayor? This is off 63rd, Chicago, from the beach to the burbs. Chicago, welcome to a fresh and exciting show created especially for you. You're watching Off 63rd with Gerard McClendon. And every Thursday night, 6.30 p.m., we'll talk about our wonderful city, Chicago, and the people in it. Traveling by car or by internet today, listen to the show as we welcome host Harold Lee Rush and our WKKC listeners at 89.3 FM and on the internet at www.wkkc.fm on the radio simulcast. Off 63rd is your green light to exploring Chicago from the beach to the burbs, fusing public affairs, politics, education, and pop culture. We're interactive, so you can watch and call the show tonight. It's campaign time in the city as we count down a Chicago mayoral election. There's no shortage of opinion regarding the mayoral race, but the one that matters most is the state Supreme Court's decision concerning Rahm Emanuel. Let's listen to the court of public opinion with the word on the street. If he's still paying taxes here, if they take his money, they could take his nomination. Serving the military, he would have been still resident. He was serving the president, so yeah. I think he should. I hope they say that he can run. I'm not so sure about Rahm Emanuel, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes his commercials don't come across as really sincere. It's like he's reading from yeah. them or something. He's lived all his life in Chicago. Okay. I mean, he, he took a position to help uh, Obama out, you know, and uh, he's got an opportunity to run for mayor. I say, why not? That's the word on the street. Later in the show, mayoral candidate Bill Doc Walls will be in the forum. But joining us right now for a spirited discussion on Chicago politics and its issues are talk show host on the big 89 WLS AM 890 commentator and a past Illinois gubernatorial candidate, Mr. Dan Proft. And in the mix with us tonight is a man who cannot live in Bridgeport, writer, comic, and co-host of syndicated Michael Bayston show, Mr. George Wilborn. Gentlemen, welcome to Off 63rd. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you. having us. You know what, fellas? We just find out that a Supreme Court 7-0 to zero decision on Rahm Emanuel being able to maintain his status on the ballot. He can run for mayor. Let me start with Dan first. Is he a resident, it's irrelevant now, but is he a resident and is it fair in terms of the vote? What do you think? Well, the, the Supreme Court, I mean, this is classic for Illinois. It's Republicans and Democrats coming together to make a bad decision. And that's what I think the Supreme <laughs> Court did in this case. I don't believe he qualifies under the residency law. Uh, the bottom line, I think that the critical uh, piece is that he rented out his home. So by definition, he no longer intended to reside there, which is why his petitions have another address. His nominating petitions had another address, and he clearly didn't have residency at that other address for a year prior to the election. So whether you agree with the residency law or not, everybody should abide the same law, and in this case, he's getting away with not abiding the same law. Dan, I want to talk to you a little bit later about your scathing editorial on WLS's website, which was quite interesting. Let me go to George Wilborn. George, resident or not, Supreme uh, Court says he's in. George Wilborn, what well, do you the think? the Supreme Court did what uh, it's uh, supposed to do, and that's to let the appellate court know what a horrible job it did. <laughs> um, it's uh, quite obvious to people who uh, was born in this city, raised their children in this city, educated in this city, and uh, worked in this city, and then to be called uh, to do the duties of, uh, from the President of the United States to say, will you come work for me and work for this country, which last time I checked, I think Chicago is still in this country. To uh, that be the reason that you consider them not a resident, I, I think is absurd. I think the Supreme Court came down with a 
with a, a ruling that they had to. You know what, George, I want to come back, because you, you open up a can of worms here. I want to come back to Dan's comment, because I'm looking at the article here from the Sun-Times. It says, the novel standard adopted by the appellate court majority is without any foundation in Illinois law. This is the Supreme Court's ruling. Also, the objectors claim that once a person rents out a residence, he or she has abandoned it as a matter of law. The court's decision said this is obviously incorrect. Let's go to that editorial that I saw online. Dan, you're saying this is totally unfounded and he, he should definitely be out of the mix. I mean, come well, on, if his driver's license says Chicago, come on, Dan. Well, I mean, th there's, there's like the common sense standard and then there's the actual statute. I mean, look, uh, I don't necessarily, like I said, agree with the particulars of the residency law or some of the case history that the courts have relied on to make decisions. I mean, we've had candidates kicked off the ballot in this state for, not st for stapling their nominating petitions instead of binding them uh, in a per more permanent fashion. So you know, the courts are very tough when it comes to the election statutes as written, except here. Mm. And I, I don't, you know, frankly, I don't appreciate the decision. I mean, it, it's, it's typical of Chicago, which is uh, the election law is what it is unless it impedes my guy from winning. But it seems like and, the and that's court, the problem. It seems like the appellate court did whatever they could to try to find a statute that would kick him off. Okay, so, to, oh, you know. oh, okay great points, because we've got some point, counterpoint here. So let's look at not only the statute, and the decision that was made. Let's look at this as a possible political setup. We see that Mayor Daley decides not to run, all right? Mm. It's almost like a chess game. Once he decides not to run, Rahm Emanuel a few years ago said, hmm, if Mayor Daley doesn't run, I'd be glad to be the mayor of Chicago. And then mysteriously, Mayor Daley's brother gets Rahm Emanuel's old job. Dan, was this an operative move that happened on purpose. Well, and then, George, I want your feelings on this And, as and well. don't forget, I mean, yeah, right, right, as you kind of alluded to, Rahm Emanuel on the Charlie Rose show this summer saying, oh, you know, someday I'd like to be mayor of Chicago, but of course only when Mayor Daley retires and then three months later he <laughs> retires. So it's certainly great fodder for conspiracy theorists. But I, I think the whole tenor of this conversation is so interesting to me because it's like we're going to be deprived of something as Chicagoans if Rahm Emanuel's not allowed to run. Mm. Uh, we're not going to be deprived of anything. Just wait four years and you run in 2015 when you're clearly established your residency. I, so what do we do in the meantime? What do we do with well, those four you, years? What, what well, candidate the, is the well, one that's going to clean up these streets and, and do something with the harbor educational system that we have well, here? Who oh, okay, does oh, that? Oh, just go four years without? No, Gary Chico's more qualified to be mayor than Rahm Emanuel. Oh, 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 okay. That's you in your opinion. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, I offer my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this, this right. is, I'm loving this. We're going to take phone calls a little bit later. You know, get your questions or comments ready because I'm giving you the call-in number in a moment. But let's discuss strengths and weaknesses of the individual candidates. And it looks like the, you two gentlemen were headed into that direction. I mentioned, uh, you mentioned Chico's name. Of course, we got Rahm Emanuel's name in the mix. Let's look at some of the other candidates. Strengths, weaknesses, pick a candidate. Let's start with George. Pick a candidate, give me some strengths well, I'm gonna and weaknesses. I'm going to pick Rahm. I'm going to pick Rahm because I, I believe, first of all, he's, uh, he's proven himself to be one that can get things done. This city is in a situation right now where the education is horrible. You have kids, I have, I have a 20 year old, Dan, I think you said that you're not married and you don't have children. That's not to dismiss what's important to you as a, as a citizen of Chicago. But for a man who has a 20-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old and a son, education is crucial for me. It's, in, it's important for my child to be able to be put in a position where they can, they can prosper the best they can in life. I think that uh, you need someone who's uh, have a track record of getting stuff done. I like Rom. I like the fact that he's tough on on crime. He's going to, this is a city that you can't even, no matter almost any neighborhood but, you walk in. But George, you know? do you think Rahm Emanuel will pay attention to education though? I think he will. I think he will pay attention to education. I think, I think that it's important. He said that this is going to be one of the top priorities. He knows that the citizens of this, of this city, it's not just me, they know. It's a call across this country. You look at where we are education-wise. The president just addressed it the other night. You know, it's, it's something that we have to stop looking to uh, avoid and say it's not a problem. It's a huge problem. Uh, I agree. Dan, Dan Proff. I, I agree. I, I mean, I may not have kids in the Chicago public school system, but I write about school reform uh, all the time. And you're um, still a taxpayer well, paying for uh, schools. And, but but even, forget even the taxpayers. I want uh, kids to be given the skills they need to be successful yes. independent adults. And that is not happening in CPS right now. But Rahm Emanuel is an implementation tool. He is not an executive. That's mm -hmm. what he has been all his career, an implementation tool for somebody else. 
Gary Chico, on the other hand, <laughs> has been uh, the, the school board president of CPS. And during those six years that he was, uh, we advanced charter schools to introduce some competition, to give some parents some choice, uh, to make the system better, at least have some more options. Now, I, CPS has a long way to go, and I don't agree with everything Gary Chico has said, but at least he's been heading up these agencies, and he has advanced policies that I think move the flag towards the very uh, outcomes that you're talking Gentlemen, about. Gentlemen, we find out today that Chicago Public Schools has voted on adding additional charter schools into the mix in Chicago. Strong move? Uh, is this a political move? Is this a way of Chicago public schools heading off other educational management corporations so they can keep the per pupil funding? What do you think, George? I think one thing that we have to understand is that when it comes to public schools and the teachers that are in there, one of the toughest jobs in the world is to be a teacher. By the time the kids get to school, these teachers have to be a social worker. They've got to be a counselor. They've got to be a disciplinarian. They've got to be all these things before they get a chance to be a teacher. All right, and, and what we as citizens need to understand, people who have children, is that we are the first line of defense and the teachers are the second line of defense. So by the time we come <laughs> to the teachers, they're frustrated and burnt out at the two year mark, okay? They don't even want, and then a new teacher come in with a lot of energy and he's talking to the old teacher, he's like, man, look, in two years, you're gonna feel just like I do. So we've gotta do something to yeah. offset what that. What can the mayor do to improve schools? Is it more magnet? Is it more charter? Dan? Well, let me, let me put it this way. So we, everybody seems to agree that charter schools has been a positive innovation, that uh, it's, you know, the, the results are in and they seem to be outperforming their neighborhood counterparts. But only 6% of CPS students, of so the 400,000 kids in CPS, get access to a charter school. Absolutely. So if it's good enough for 6%, why isn't it good enough for the other 94%? Mm. What the next mayor should do, and Gary Chico has proposed a kind of a, a very small step in this process of extending choice to 50,000 kids, what the next mayor should do is change the way money flows and who gets to make spending decisions to put mm. money in the hands of parents to allow them to choose their child's education rather than being relegated to neighborhood schools that we know will fail them. It's too yeah. many parents though, there's so many parents that are not in a position to make those good decisions and sometimes, I mean, there's a huge amount of parents who are, who are children themselves. We're assuming that the parents who do deserve the right to have the power t for school choice, we're assuming that they're they responsible it, parents. Well, and so, that they will yeah, make the right choice. Yeah, but you, you can't do worse than what's happening now. Gentlemen, I, I gotta interrupt you just one second. I, I, I do want you to kick back on your comment. Chicago, it's about time that you give me a call. You can talk with Dan Proft, you can talk with George Wilborn, 773-487-3630. That's 773-487-3630. Three, zero. Call us now to express yourself. What are the biggest issues facing the new mayor? Okay, gentlemen, we're going to segue here. I do want to finish up with schools. Dan, you had a comment concerning schools. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, if you designed a system that, that's purpose was to not educate children, you could hardly do a better job than the Chicago Public School System did. Mm. So the fact that some parents might not avail themselves of the choices that you would extend to them does not mean that you shouldn't avail choices to the other parents who would. Okay. I mean, okay. it's just that simple. Okay, that, that, now I'm glad you got to clarify that point. Here's what some of your neighbors had to say concerning issues for the new mayor. Let's listen. The most pressing issue is probably jobs. You know, so I mean, it's, it's, it's real hard times out here for people, you know. I've had several, several problems, especially with Chicago school systems and the education uh, or the educational um, books and things that they bring to, to my children. They haven't been as challenging as the other schools, and that's my biggest problem. Well, the economy and uh, local jobs. So what are the biggest issues facing the new mayor? Gentlemen, let's get right into this. I've got a few comments here. Is it education, jobs, safety, the parking meter lease, $1.1 billion, or machine politics? Let me start with Mr. George Wilborn. I think um, um, Illinois, Chicago is no different from um, most of this country. People uh, are out of work. They need jobs. Um, people are hurting. You know, they're trying to find ways to make ends meet. They're trying to find ways to, to say, okay, you know what, I got one person in the family that's, that's working and, and this person has lost a job, they've been laid off, and, and, no, and no one seems to want to hire them. Now, that's not always the case. So sometimes we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, how hard am I doing and, and, and how much am, am I doing to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm qualified and I'm getting into the workplace. But this next mayor is going to have to deal with 
the situation of the lack of jobs. Mm. You have people around here saying, I want to work. You have very educated people that's got degrees on the wall and they're still, you know, shopping at the dollar store. That's a good point.